we know four dimensions, and alongside the three spatial dimensions, there is always a temporal dimension. This means that any physical process must have some speed. This is exactly the metric that defines the behavior of this process in the temporal dimension. But if we talk about the speed of gravity, a lot of misunderstandings will arise right away. Of questions. And some, let's say, confusions. Imagine a simple situation. You took an apple and placed it in a gravitational field. How long do you think it will take for gravity to start acting on that apple? Today we're talking about the speed of gravity. I am, as before, called Yuri Trifonov, and we will explore why this question raises some interesting confusions and why we should even talk about it. Conversation. To discuss the speed of a physical process, we must grasp its unfolding in nature. As gravity is not fully understood, confusion arises. We need to understand the meaning of how this physical process unfolds and its nature. And since we don't fully understand the nature of gravity, a lot of pitfalls arise that can lead to confusion. And if we briefly go over the basics, so to speak, of the nature of gravity, we can identify, well, probably three main theories. The first theory, which follows, let's say, from the quantum understanding of the nature of gravity, is based on some hypothetical particles called gravitons. So if we briefly go over the basics, let's say, of the nature of gravity, we can identify, probably, three main theories. The first theory, which follows, let's say, from the quantum understanding of the nature of gravity, is based on some hypothetical particles called gravitons. Gravitons are particles that essentially transmit gravitational interaction from one body to another, and it is precisely because of gravitons that a gravitational field exists. Moreover, the gravitational field itself is, so to speak, a collection of gravitons that allows the phenomenon we call gravity to be transmitted from one body to another. It's kind of, well, let's say, it's a rather hypothetical, quite controversial, and rather complex theory which is largely based on field physics that hinges on the quantization of everything and anything. The next theory, which is, let's say, the most widely accepted right now, although no, let me first talk about Newton's theory because it's very simple and we'll come back to it later. We'll come back to it. Newton's theory, and so this gravity, let's say, how should I put it? Gravity is ancient, let's say. It's based solely on the fact that gravity simply exists. And so Newton proposed the idea that gravity exists, but he didn't really explain why it exists. Of course, he didn't say that it doesn't matter why it exists, but he didn't emphasize this point particularly. And he studied how the parameters of bodies interact with each other when they are affected by each other's radiation fields. And now the third one, of course. We skipped over Newton. We need to return to the third one, the most popular, the most well-known, and the one that seems the most scientific. As of today, the theories of gravity. This, of course, is the theory of relativity, and this is, of course, everything that Einstein came up with. According to what Einstein proposed, gravity exists because there are certain distortions in space and even in time. These distortions are, let's say, some dents in the fabric of space-time. There are a lot of controversial and complex points here, which should be discussed separately, and which should also be, let's say, given special attention, but broadly speaking, we are interested in what causes the distortion in the space-time that you've always seen depicted like this dent, let's say, in the coordinate grid. It actually allows gravity to exist. But here's an important point. The object doesn't actually roll into this funnel, and the object exists alongside this funnel. And now, knowing the basic assumptions about how gravity works, we can talk about speed. And the object exists together with this funnel. And now, knowing the basic assumptions about how gravity works, we can talk about speed. If we talk about the quantum understanding of what happens, what we will have. We took this apple. The apple is our most gravitational fruit. And now let's imagine that this gravitational apple has come into the action of the gravitational field. And the gravitational field, according to quantum concepts, consists of some hypothetical gravitons, which today are considered virtual particles. Then they say that they can supposedly be detected. But let's not. These gravitons should act on the apple. Of course, if we're talking about some particle wave theory, then for these particles to somehow affect another object or interact with the particles existing around that object, some time is needed. In order for the tea to dissolve in boiling water or for the tea to brew, if we're being precise, time needs to pass. So, the speed of gravity, when explaining the existence of gravity through gravitons, will be determined by the speed at which these gravitons move. And I want to say that this theory is considered, well, incorrect. All right then, what is the speed of gravity in Newton's theory? In this case, it's worth mentioning that again, this question hasn't been fundamentally evaluated. And it's safe to say that the speed of gravity was instantaneous. 
Newton, most likely considered it that way. The question, like everything else, is from the perspective of some absolute... Well, since gravity was not understood back then, the nature of gravity wasn't questioned. There was no discussion about it. It was under some kind of doubt. It was believed that gravity could work instantaneously. And here we come to that very moment. That deserves close attention. Why do most people even question the speed of gravity? The thing is, according to the theory of relativity, we're now approaching the third theory mentioned at the very beginning of the video, that no process can occur instantaneously. And here it should be noted that the most objective theory of gravity today is the theory of relativity. As we have already pointed out, and therefore, the speed of gravity, based on modern understanding, cannot violate Einstein's logic. And so, the speed of gravity will correspond to the speed of light. But here, a curious mind might ask a few more questions. The first question will be like this. You often say that gravity is not a force, and it seems like that's a pretty common opinion. So why can't gravity happen instantaneously? And why, if it's some kind of property, can't it behave like quantum entanglement? There's a lot of misunderstanding here, and I'm afraid that modern science doesn't have the right answers to these questions. Let's start with quantum entanglement, which is being compared to gravity here. First of all, let's say why gravity is not a force. Well, according to the ideas that we outlined in function 3, where we said that, according to Einstein's theory of gravity, there is some specific behavior caused by the distortion of space in the presence of massive bodies. We are considering gravity here only as a certain property. Well, if it's a property, then by this logic, a property could be instantaneous, and everything would be fine. And your logic would continue to work. If Einstein himself hadn't mentioned gravitational waves, he explained that gravity, this huge distortion, this pit that forms in space, creates some kind of ripple that actually transmits gravity. So gravity should not be viewed just as a pit in a field, but rather as a moving and living phenomenon. It creates a kind of disturbance that actually transmits gravity. So, gravity should not be viewed just as a pit in a field, but rather as a moving and living phenomenon. It's more like the reality on the surface of the water from a stone rather than a pit on a golf course. And in this scenario we have an object that is moving and therefore the reasoning that we have now introduced is relative to the property. Regarding the idea that if an apple is green then it is green instantly, that's not relevant here. Again I looked at how to write Einstein's theory and we consider, as I already said, it is now the most correct I don't want to say that it's necessarily correct, it's just that modern physics considers it to be the most logical and validated approach. And to be fair, that's how it turns out. And by the way, here's another example where it turned out that way. If gravity moves, it most likely moves with a kind of wave-like nature. And here it's worth mentioning the gravitational waves that have been discovered. And uh, the effect is the same. We threw a small stone into the water and waves started to ripple out, gradually fading away. We threw a massive object somewhere into the universe, and gravitational waves started to propagate, working in a similar way. For all of this to be transmitted, some time is needed. And we remember that, according to Einstein, who came up with all this, nothing can exceed the speed of light, otherwise physics would fall apart and nothing would work. And you probably guessed that in this scenario, the speed of gravity cannot exceed the speed of light. And why is that? Light? And why is that? Because gravitational waves cannot exceed the speed of light? Moreover, studies have been conducted, measurements have been taken, which show that the speed of gravity, it depends on the medium that exists around it, 